today I really wanted to highlight what this guy did, Jeremy, uh, former procurement director of Enakem, uh, because, uh, you know, we are talking, we've been talking all day long about collaboration between companies, and Jeremy had indeed a very, very creative way of initiating a strategic partnership in an industry that is not exactly known for its agility, it's petrochemical industry, and we will talk about building plants. So, how cool is that? First of all, uh, Jeremy, could you... Uh, maybe a few words about myself, sorry, I nearly forgot. So, I'm Sophie Durand, I'm a, I am a Linergy procurement trainer and coach, and uh, I had the opportunity to uh, deal with this case with Jeremy, and I, it's a great pleasure to have him here and interview him uh, to get the story, you know, from the inside. <laughs> so, Jeremy, could you tell us a few words about yourself and also about Enakem? Yeah, sure. So, uh, well, first, uh, thank you for welcoming here. Uh, hi, Sophie. Pleasure to see you. Uh, so I'm Jeremy Bego. I'm a former procurement director for Europe and Asia uh, for Enakem. So Enakem is a Canadian company, actually. So I'm French also, another one, uh, but also Canadian. Uh, live there. And uh, Enakem is, uh, is uh, uh, let's say, uh, green tech. Uh, let's call it green tech. And uh, is uh, making... A from the waste, uh, some biofuels. So we, we say methanol. Uh, so methanol, ethanol. So pretty cool uh, concept actually in technology. Uh, and I came as plant in North America and, and projects uh, all over the, the globe, basically. Okay, so and uh, back in October, so how before that, before we jump into the story, how would you describe Enakem's culture as a company? Well, so Enakem is, is quite, I would say, actually uh, agile to, to fit the purpose here. <laughs> and uh, the reason is ba basically it's, it's a startup still after a few years of, of operations uh, because it's new technologies and you have to break uh, a lot of walls to get into it. Uh, and we, it's new technology, you have to convince people and you have to be agile. Uh, it's a small team still, we're talking about uh, 300 people in the company. Uh, so small, small, medium size, let's say, for, for the market. Uh, but we have activities all over the globe. So you really need to, to be in the need to deliver mode. Like the mindset is really, we, we have to deliver and really team focus working together. So that's about it, I would say. So kind of a big startup in, uh, in the petrochemical industry. And if I remember well, when we met one year ago, it was, uh, you had quite of a big challenge to, to overcome. What was it? Well, we so based in Canada, but uh, global market. So we had a few projects in Europe, and uh, the most advanced uh, is is the Tarragona project. So in Spain, and uh, we have this uh, Ecoplanta plant uh, with partnership with uh, big oil and gas partners, uh, and we had to well, we have to build a large energy plant so uh, to convert again convert waste to biofuels. It's it's more or less a, a big refinery. You can if you can picture it. It's a big refinery, uh, and but the green a green refinery. Let's call it. And uh, we had to select to build this this plant. You have to first do design, so engineering. And to do this engineering, you you, you can do it by yourself if you, if you are a big company. But typically in this industry, you call for a full partner. So engineering, procurement, and and sometimes construction partners. In our case, we were looking for uh, what we call an EP, so engineering procurement uh, partner, providing services to, to us to design and procure equipment for these plants. And maybe for those who are not maybe not fami very familiar, I guess, with uh, how, to, how to build a plant, what does an engineering and procurement uh, partner would do typically? What are the kind of deliverables? How many, how big is the project? I guess maybe you could give a little order of magnitudes. Sure. Well, I cannot discuss any, any dollar <laughs> or euros here, but uh, obviously uh, you need a, a large team of people, engineers for most of them, uh, that will uh, so prepare deliverables that will allow to build the plant. So to build something, you need a drawing, you need, you need a plan, uh, you need a schedule, you need 
uh, of obviously cost control and so on. So they, they provide all those, those services in, mainly on engineering. You know, we're talking, uh, we're talking structural steel, uh, piping, electrical, big equipments, compressors, so large industry components. Uh, and they have to develop all the engineering uh, for the 3D modeling and so on. And uh, that's for this project I, I could share is about, uh, well, it's over 20,000 deliverables. So we are talking a lot of documentations, uh, some hundreds of thousands of man hours. So it's quite a large contract in that case. 20,000 deliverable, you said, you just said. So when Jeremy first said that to me, I said, oh, <laughs> how can we do that? And, uh, and also you had specific and particular expectation from, uh, from this invitation to tender. So before sending it, you had particular expectation from this partner. Yeah, well, the first was like to, to meet the schedule. Uh, we're really in a time to market mode at NACM, uh, so we need to, to get to our market as, as quick as possible. And our partners, like all India's industry, that our partners are also uh, very keen on, on the timeline. So we have to select a, a partner, the good partner, but on a timely manner. And we also need it because we are, most of the team is Canadian, uh, we also need it to have a cultural fit with this company. So you bring those Canadian guys into Europe. Uh, you need to make sure they will they will fit with the the people well, in Spain in that case. So we wanted also to test uh, and, and make sure we are selecting the the proper partner. It seems a little bit of a paradox because you said you wanted the time to market, you wanted to go fast, but also to uh, to try to find a good partner with a good cultural fit, which in uh, in, in everybody's opinion would typically take time, so, uh, so it's a bit of a paradox. So how did you approach the, the sourcing case and the ITT? To what, what, do you, what did you do that was different from what, what, what you, should, you used to do before? Well, first the ask was different. So typically in, in that industry, to select a partner like this, uh, it would be like six to eight months maybe more eight months actually, uh, with a long, long tender process. And uh, while well, our, our top management and the partners were like, okay, uh, we need to, to find this partner within three months. So that's always a funny statement when you get that. You know, you're the, you're the procurement guy and the team knows also that, well, it takes six to eight months, but the ask is three months. So we, we had to think about something else how to achieve that. And uh, well, I, I had my brother-in-law actually was, he's an agile consultant. He talked about me about, me, about agility. I said, okay, that's that be nice to apply that to procurement. Uh, but while well, still this is IT and well, it's very far from uh, my, my business, but still I looked into internet and uh, well, I found, I found about the Lean Agile Procurement website. I said, well, that's amazing. And I found also about, uh, well, Sophie actually. Uh, so. I contacted, uh, I contacted you and, and uh, we tried to, to see what would be uh, feasible to, uh, to improve the, the process and to achieve the, the three months. Uh, actually, we, we launched the, the invitation to tender to uh, three, three companies, uh, same as we do typically. So we, you send a lot of documentation, a lot of paperwork, and they look at it. And then they, typically they have to, to build a proposal and you have back and forth between you and them. Uh, before the tender and after the tender is received as well. So uh, it's a lot of communications and uh, not less of time, but because of the quantity of information we have to share and they have to understand you have a lot of exchanges. So what we did differently with, with the lab, the lineage procurement, is uh, we prepared workshops, basically. Uh, and we prepared two, two types of workshops. We prepared workshops within our uh, disciplines lead. So when I say disciplines, it is structural, electrical, Mechanical, so we have a lot of disciplines in, in, into engineering for those plants. And uh, we, we had to have small workshops so we see the fit between the disciplines as well. So those standards, they provided uh, their lead and this, this case with all leads. And then we had those big workshops like for the proposal of development itself. So I think you just saw the canvas. So it's basically what we did with those three, uh, three companies. Uh, and that allows us uh, really to, uh, to, to really condense everything Within three months, uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, we sent our, our uh, invitation to tender in October, and we actually we selected the partner right after the workshop, honestly, because we knew everyone knew that 
who was the winner. We didn't have the tender, but we had enough information to say, okay, we have the, the early rate, we have the man hours, we see a fit. So, okay, let's wait for the, the, the piece of papers, but that's probably done. So by mid of Jan, we already knew and, and we're ready to place the contracts, basically. So basically, you kept all the important documentation beforehand, sending them to the provider so they had enough information to know, to know what you were talking about building this eco planta. Uh, but the, so the original idea is, is that instead of them just going home with all the documentation, with the, the boxes <laughs> of documentation, as, as Philip said earlier, uh, yeah, you, you invited them, uh, discuss one-to-one uh, -one with the discipline, but with, uh, within a big workshop, co-creating their proposition, their, uh, their tender uh, with you directly, so maximizing all the exchange. And uh, so you said that the team, Enerchem's team, the project team, uh, kind of already have already decided with who they wanted to work just right after the workshops. Yeah. How, how did they decide? What, what, what was the driver f for them to say, hey, we want to go with those guys? Yeah, what we did uh, beside the, 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 the Canva, uh, the lab Canva, is uh, we, build, we asked them to build a schedule for the project itself. So building the plans. R right inside so, the workshop, right? Yeah, yeah. right inside the workshop. Yeah. So that was, we take like just two hours of the day. And we ask them, each of them, okay, you have 18 months to perform your, your, your contract here. How do you do? What are the big milestones? And how do you achieve that in that timeline? And that was co-creation, of course, between them, but also with us. So we had the, the chance to work with them, asking questions. Well, they're asking questions and answers. So really like agility again, like uh, with, with different occurrence. And they, each of them, they did it differently, obviously. And we just from this exercise, we, we saw the fit first. So who, who was probably proactive, the leaders, but you also see in the team, in their team, what are the roles and what are the people? Because the team that they brought were the team that were to, to do the job as well. So you test immediately and you see the fit with them, but also between them. So that was what really triggered it. Beside of all the costs, uh, as a procurement guy, I would say, cost <laughs> is important. So I was also looking at, at costs, obviously, uh, and, and the quality. But I was with my, my project team, so project director, contract administrator, and, and a bunch of engineers as well, that a part of the, of the project. And, and they were looking at the quality of the people and, and of the exchanges. So that the decisions were really based on quality of the exchange, of the workshop with the teams. Yeah, it played actually a, a really great role in that, that decision making. And but let's talk about now. So after say eight months of cooperation with this partner, so how is it like? Well, first we did we did achieve the the, the three to five month savings on the timeline, so that was great. <laughs> and uh, and we were able to start working with them even before the financial decision. So that was also interesting because we developed this relationship with them. So we went through the honeymoon, I'll say, and we are still married. So that's pretty good, good sign. Uh, actually, we have a, a, like a multi-project uh, also agreement uh, being signed with them. So that's uh, that's that's quite in interesting. That was also one of the goal uh, of this. Is was for one project we select a partner, but let's select uh, one partner, but build many plans with them. And that was also the idea. Uh, and for now, uh, I can say for the for the team, I think, I, of course, it's not easy every every day. Again, the twenty thousand deliverables, <laughs> but uh, it's it's going well. And and uh, definitely, the methodology uh, helped a lot. Um, earlier this morning, I remember Tim Cummings' talk and uh, other talks from the contracting side of things, and they were mentioning some light, uh, light contracting mode allowing people to uh, to 
to, to, to begin working together very early in the process. So I remember, Jeremy, that's what you told, uh, told me a few months uh, after, that, that you were able to start with a very, very light kind of agreement. So uh, absolutely far from a whole, uh, from a contract cov covering all the FPL3 uh, phase. And, uh, and now you're talking about a multi-project agreement how how did it go between between the two well it, it's it's the baby steps right so if you start something with a partner and you start small but you you look for big you definitely you will make it so we, we did the this light agreement uh, we, we we knew the top like a head of stems that they were looking for and we were looking for so already in the workshop we knew what would be the yeah, the alignment points or desi disagreement points and, and we started with this light contract. We started the team working, executing the work, and in parallel, we closed the, the main contract. So that, 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 and that was fine because we, we agreed about the big, big ticket items within the, the workshop. And, and the multi-project contract came uh, in parallel as well because well, it, it's just like uh, having discussions, legal discussions and commercial discussions doesn't like, uh, mean that you cannot start working. Uh, when you select a partner, and, and that's what we did. We we worked and developed the contracts in parallel. Okay, and now maybe for uh, from a more uh, personal experience, how did you live it? Personally, well, as a procurement guy? <laughs> well, I, I like to, to go out of my comfort zone. <laughs> so I'm this type of guy, and, and I, I think I did. <laughs> so, but I, I did not do it alone. So there was uh, something with, with the company, with the team. Uh, so for me, it was a uh, revolutionary, sorry, uh, going from heavy process, every procurement process in a very conservative industry to this agility um, method like with the lab. Uh, for me, was was amazing, and uh, it was really what uh, I think was really nice is it was a team building as well. So we had this project team working together at the NACM side, and that really helped to to like do a team building experience and work through together. And and we are all like remember those those times where we were building the schedules with with the different companies, and I think it also helped us to to work together even better. And, uh, and you were speaking about the project team. So how did they react when you first brought out this crazy LAP ID? Well, uh, they were curious um, because they are engineers, you know. So, uh, but they were also skeptical because they are engineers as well. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they, I think they, they, they know me and they say, okay, if Jeremy think it's going to work, probably it's going to work. <laughs> let's, uh, it, it, it looks good, so let, let's try it. And they were uh, so uh, really fast in the process. They were amazed and excited about preparing this workshop. First, it didn't took too much time from, from the team, so that was efficient. And second, they really understood that uh, they're going to get to know the, the partners, the people, and that would be definitely a, a, a plus. In any case, uh, if it's working or not, you, you know the, the, the potential partners, you know the team, so it's, it's already a, a, a win, let's say. And what about the providers, the competitors? How did they react when you brought that out? That crazy idea of not doing any documentation beforehand and uh, bringing them into workshops instead? Well, they uh, I think well. It's it's also I would say they're also engineers, huh? so <laughs> and they, they are world. playing with. It. <laughs> no, no, no offense to engineers, <laughs> but uh, uh, I think it's it's oil and gas in general and petrochemical is, is always has been heavy process. But they saw an came as you know this game changing company. And they say, okay, we have to. We also have to follow those type of companies, and and they were they want to try something. Let's go with them. So they were uh, at the end. They were also amazed and excited. I got like very good feedbacks at the end of the workshop. They were like, okay, that that was amazing. In only a few hours, uh, you get a good sense of what we can deliver, uh, our proposal, our rates, and so on. And well, they, on their side, they save a lot of money because. 
putting that proposal together in the conventional market and, uh, and, and tendering. Probably 30 people uh, at peak for six months. It's a lot of money. And in that case, they put maybe half of, of the people and, and half the time. So you can imagine they save uh, a lot of, uh, let's say, the thousand, hundreds of thousands uh, euros here. So everybody wins, it seems. But what were the learnings you took from that experience? Well, I think producing a, a ton of paper for an invitation to tender is, is not necessary. At least, well, you, you, you have to do it still, but it's not uh, relevant and efficient to go through a full process for all the contracts. Uh, in this specific case, it was the, the, the LAP was a perfect fit, I believe. And what really matters is that you work uh, with your potential partners and you build those proposals together to, to know and, and get to know each other. And that's really, uh, I think, what is the learning is you can work with your potential partners and then you, you know them, if, even if you don't know them at all, after one or two days, you, you can feel the cultural fit on that. Okay, Jeremy, maybe uh, before we close uh, the regular interview session, do you have a, maybe an anecdote, fun fact that you wanted to share with us? Well, well maybe about those, uh, those pad, the tenderers, pre tenderers, because it's, uh, it's very conventional industry. When I, I told them, well, we're going to do those workshops, they were, okay, well, a good idea, nice, why not? Uh, and then I told them, well, we're going to do it all together in the same room, so with your competitors. And they looked at me, each of them, and they said, well, Jeremy, baby steps. We already crossed the limits, so we don't want to go all together in there. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much, Jeremy, for your, for your inside version of the story. It was really important to me that you were, you were telling that uh, story instead of just me. So, Jeremy, first question, will you do now all purchasing activity that way? <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Actually, um, I think uh, first I was, I was thinking out that's uh, fit for services mainly. Um, but I would say you can apply that, that to everything that is Quite large contract, let's say uh, over a million contract is definitely a good uh, a good approach, um, and even for equipment. So in the, in the industry, we buy a lot of big and large equipment, and uh, I was thinking about it with some key suppliers. Actually, we talked about it with the colleagues for a big uh, big equipment contract as well, where you you build this uh, proposal with the supplier. So you go maybe more technical into the sessions, but instead of having again three, four, five months. Uh, tendering process with uh, a lot of clarifications and so on. You do those workshops on the lap way, on the LAP way, and definitely uh, it would be efficient. So for all the contracts, maybe not, but every large contact, yeah, for sure, that's definitely uh, the best approach I've seen. And uh, what are, second question, what are the main challenges of conducting this kind of work workshops? With your providers well you, you have to first I, th I think convince them that they have to bring their team uh, to a workshop that they don't know what they're gonna do and uh, they don't know what's gonna be the output so you have to discuss and and the first step is to explain them what you're going to do uh, some of them will go directly on maybe on on the lean agile procurement website to understand but in any case you have to to explain so first challenge is to convince your partners and then you have to convince internally, uh, of course, your the top management, because you're not going through a standard process here. Uh, you're cutting corners, I would say. Uh, you still keep a same level of documentation, but everything is more uh, like uh, during the exchange in the, in the workshop is not necessarily all on paper. So you have to convince the top management and your bosses that the, you're going to get what you need from this process, but you won't necessarily have all the, everything in written somewhere, which anyways, you, you won't go, go back to written in, in general, but that's, that's really what uh, is the challenge is to convince both partners and, and the company. 
Thank you, Jeremy, for embarking with, you, with me in that incredible journey <laughs> of a very, very heavy procurement uh, um, project. And thank you for your, your attention. Yeah.